Welcome to Investor's Insights, episode number 132. Today we will be discussing why are people buying corporate bonds and are earnings going to impact your portfolio? Now, let me say this. If you like what we have to say on this vlog, let us know. If you don't like what we have to say, let us know. We like dialogue. And I also want to encourage you to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And links are on our blog. So let's jump right in uh, and see what we were debating earlier this morning. I'm Greg Powell, and this is Investor's Insights. You're listening to Investor's Insights with President and CEO Greg Powell and the Portfolio Strategy Team at Popland Partners. All right, Trey, I'm going to start off with you because you were bringing up some interesting points about the Fed and uh, interest rates. Talk about that a little bit. And corporate earnings you talked about. So two big things happened uh, in the last week and then as a continuing story. One is the Fed last week came out and with a slightly changed uh, message. They didn't have a uh, press conference, but they had a release of a statement. And the slight change seems to be a bit more hawkish, which means more likely that uh, Fed will be a little tight. Right. They removed some of the language about interna- international risks. And they really honed in on that they're watching U.S. job growth. Okay. And so in a, a good way to watch U.S. job growth ahead of the Fed numbers is to watch earnings. Because uh, mm-hmm. the company, these are the ones that have to hire are, people. Is corporate America making money? Exactly. Right. Very important. Uh, <laughs> and so it right right impacts your stock. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then earnings come into play. Right. Uh, sure. And so it, it, we recently passed the halfway point SBO 500. Uh, 253 of the companies have reported. Uh, looking, looking like... Earnings are still going to come down, come in low. Negative three point oh seven percent is expected growth rate. Negative is always bad. What's interesting is they're coming in a little above expectations, so a really low bar, kind of easy to hop over. Yeah. But still, uh, we still have half left to watch. Uh, but as they come in, look and see if they're announcing. Are they hiring new people? Are they, you know, where is the growth coming from? Right. Is there any growth? Uh, that's some interesting stuff we're going to be watching. Really okay, closely. so you got corporate earnings over here, and mm-hmm. then uh, we're we're. Believe it or not, in you know, 60 days, we will be starting uh, 2016. Oh, yeah. wow. So uh, corporate earnings, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. How's that going to impact the stock market? And then you've got interest rates, and everybody's starting to, to focus on the Fed. So what's right. the debate there? So the debate is, is the Fed going to raise rates? Right. Can they raise rates? What, what's the economic news? And, we, and it looks like the Fed is trying to tell the market that they will raise rates. And, and <laughs> yeah. they kind of did this back Someday, in September. Someday, somewhere. <laughs> they kind of did this back in September, we saw. Now, we said there wouldn't be a rate hike, and we stand by that at the end of the year. But the Fed likes to pretend like they're going to, see how the market reacts, and then make a decision. Right. And we've seen them maybe kind of telegraph that they might try and raise rates in December. The market hasn't really reacted much. We were flat, each, pretty pretty okay. close to flat to down in the last week. But yeah. Not, well, yeah. and you were you were calmly explaining that, and now nowhere, actually Paige over there says, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's talk corporate bonds <laughs> oh. for just a minute. So tell us and share with uh, our folks watching here what you pointed out, that right now we're looking at, at record corporate yes. bond in- issuance. Is that we correct? Are. That's right, Greg. Greg's correct. In October, the group Deal Logic tracks that, and it was $103 billion with a B in mm-hmm. October. That's a lot of volume. And that was after a little bit of a lull in the summer, but it's roared back in September and primarily October. But What was interesting to guys and I is it's across all industries, all sectors. And so it's seeming as if the market is saying, all right, if you're a good company with a good credit rating, you've got a good product you're trying to expand, we're with you. And that's a great thing to have happen. And what we also found interesting, if this continues through the end of the year, this will be the fourth year in a row that corporate bonds, people backing long-term CapEx projects for companies, the fourth year in a row, it would be a record. So it's interesting, as Greg and Trey would say, with the interest rates, you know, you, people price things, you buy right. things for a price, right. but at the uh, fundamentally, they're going out and they're backing good corporate projects. So, so the corporations are rushing the market to get these bonds done for fear rates can't go up, right? right. But why, right. you know, answer this question, you know, I know the answers here, but from the standpoint of... Uh, why would an investor want to buy a corporate bond if you know interest rates could go up anytime soon? So that's the, that's, that's the interesting thing about the debate is, are, are companies issuing all this debt because, you know, they're growing or are they issuing this debt because they can cheaply? And is this more of an indication that investors have an insatiable appetite for, 
for rates and bonds mm-hmm. because they don't think they don't think rates are going up. Right. So that's not, okay. Right. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's well, a good well, point. So, right. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. You know. So there's still a good chance we're not going to see rates go up mm-hmm. in December. Right now, uh, it's uh, 50-50. So, uh, and and those of you watching, we're watching that very closely because mm-hmm. that's that's going to play into the way we're allocating money uh, in our portfolios. Now, Bobby, talk about last week and some things going on this week because we've got a busy week here. Yeah, I think it's important to do a quick little recap of October and all the economic reports yeah, that October come out. And so, good. obviously, first, we want to start off with the good. Uh, the good was the consumer spending was up 3.2%. We've been saying for months that we're looking for consumer spending to drive growth in this market. Uh, consumer spending is two-thirds of the economy uh, with lower oil prices. We need the consumer to get off the sideline and invest those savings to the gas pump and start buying products. And so yeah. with the holiday season here, that should continue to tick up, which is all, always a positive. And so, right. But we had to talk about the bad, and the bad was a lot. There was a slew of bad economic reports that came out. Uh, one was GDP that came out last week at 1.5%. That's down three point, from 3.9%. And so talking about the Fed, the Fed sees that uh, going from 3.9% uh, in the second quarter mm-hmm. to 1.5%. That's not good. The Fed has to watch that very closely. Right. Um, and then also on Friday, the jobs report, the big jobs report comes out. And so that uh, we're watching that closely. And if that's a bad jobs report, you have two negatives with the mm-hmm. GDP and bad jobs mm-hmm. report. The Fed has to look at that closely, uh, and we would be shocked if it does come out negative that they decide to raise in December. Uh, also, a few other things. The manufacturing index and exports were down. They were down since the, the worst since 2009, uh, so that's concerning. And then also new home sales are starting to tick down. They're right. still healthy, but they're starting to tick down a little bit. Uh, and then consumer confidence is declining, which is not good. Uh, and then U.S. durable good orders declined. And then also overseas, China's slowdown was confirmed uh, with their lower GDP number and also their manufacturing and factory index uh, at a, a low level. So it's concerning. And a lot of that's job uh, dollar related. Yep. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah. You know, you got that, that could pause the Fed's action. You got bad exports because of strong dollar. Fed raises rates. You're going to have a strong dollar. That's right. going to be yeah. more of the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So th- there's, there's a lot going on out there in terms of uh, – uh, the, the behind the scenes, I guess, is what I should say, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, or it's uh, what what appears to be one way. There's a lot of data behind it that we're trying to track to make sure and confirm that it really is what it says it is. And then on top of that, with 60 days left in the year, uh, trying to see how fourth quarter is going to to wind up. So uh, also, uh, if watching these vlogs, you need to know that we're doing an Investor's Insights call, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. We're doing that tomorrow. And so for those of you watching, love for you to participate in that. Uh, we've been doing some meetings, and if you're an out-of-town client that couldn't attend one of our meetings, uh, maybe in your location or whatever, be, feel free to, to listen to us on this call, because uh, we're going to drill down on a lot of the data we've talked about today. Information on how you can listen to this call is below the video. So on that note, uh, we will let you uh, know as earnings continue to be reported and keep you updated. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to bring you great news. Thanks for watching. More information at FIPranPartners.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC.